video will describe how to find the impulse and step response of a system. The student should be reading chapter five of the course notes and at the conclusion of this lecture, students should be able to determine the impulse response of a linear time invariant system as well as the step response of a linear time invariant system. The impulse response h of t of a causal linear time invariant continuous time system is the output response y of t when the input x of t is the unit impulse delta of t with no initial energy in the system. One example of modeling this system is to show the block diagram where the box represents the system with an input delta of t and the output h of t. Now let's solve in-class activity one. What is the impulse response of the following first order differential equation? Tau y dot of t plus y of t equals k x of t. We're going to rewrite this using h of t equal to y of t. So this becomes tau h dot of t plus h of t equals k delta of t. And now we're going to use integrating factors to solve. So the first thing I'm going to do is to rewrite this equation to get a leading coefficient of one on the first derivative of h. So this is h dot of t plus one over tau h of t equals k over tau delta of t. So the integrating factor a of t would be equal to e to the t over tau. Recall the next step is to multiply the left and right side of the equation by the integrating factor. So we have e to the t over tau h dot of t plus e to the t over tau one over tau h of t equals e to the t over tau k over tau delta of t. Remember we can rewrite this left side as the compact derivative of e to the t over tau h of t, which equals on the right side, k over tau e to the t over tau delta of t. So our next step is to integrate both sides from negative infinity to t. So I have the integral from negative infinity to t, the first derivative of e to the t over tau h of t. And on the right side, I have equal to the integral from negative infinity to t, k over tau e to the t over tau delta of t dt. After I find that integral, I have that the left side is equal to e to the t over tau h of t, which equals, once again, the integral from negative infinity to t, k over tau e to the zero delta of lambda d lambda. Now, why does this happen? This happens because of our sifting property. So once again, we have that an impulse at time zero is going to sift out that same value of that exponential. So this reduces to e to the t over tau h of t, which equals to the integral from negative infinity to t, k over tau delta of lambda d lambda. Or we have that e to the t over tau h of t is equal to, because remember the integral from negative infinity of delta of lambda is this step function. So this becomes k over tau u of t. And finally the answer, h of t is equal to k over tau e to the minus t over tau u of t. What is the impulse response of the system described by the following mathematical model? The input is x of t, the output is y of t, and the function is y of t equals x of t minus one, plus the integral from negative infinity to t, e to the negative t minus lambda, x of lambda plus t, d lambda. So we're going to replace y of t with h of t, which represents the impulse response. And we're going to replace x of t with the impulse function. So this is h of t is equal to delta of t minus one, plus the integral from negative infinity to t, e to the negative t minus lambda, delta of lambda plus t d lambda. So we have our sifting property again. So the first function is still delta of t minus one, plus the integral from negative infinity to t. And this function times the impulse means evaluate the function at lambda equal negative two. 
So I can rewrite the exponential as e to the negative quantity t plus 2 delta of lambda plus t d lambda. Now I can factor the exponential out of the integral. So I'm going to have delta of t minus 1 plus e to the negative t plus 2 times the integral from negative infinity to t delta of lambda plus 2 d lambda. So recall that delta of lambda plus 2 is an impulse at negative 2. So if you integrate from negative infinity to t and t is on the left side of negative 2, the result is a 0. If t is on the right side of negative 2, the result is the exponential. So the way to write this is h of t is equal to delta of t minus 1 plus e to the negative t plus 2 u of t plus 2, which is another way of stating that the result is 0 for t less than negative 2 and 1 times the exponential for t greater than negative 2. The unit step response s of t of a causal linear time invariant continuous time system is the output response y of t, where the input x of t is the unit step with no initial energy in the system. What is the step response of the following first order differential equation? So we have tau y dot of t plus y of t equals kx of t. So the first thing we do is we rewrite this differential equation using s of t and u of t. So we have tau s dot of t plus s of t equals k u of t. Then we're going to write it in standard form so that we can solve for s of t. So we're going to have s dot of t plus 1 over tau s of t equals k over tau u of t. So we can use integrating factors to solve as we have in the past. And when doing that, we get s of t is equal to k times the quantity 1 minus e to the negative t over tau u of t. So if you think about what a sketch of this would look like, the step response given some input is an exponentially increasing function whose final value is k. And this should look familiar from things we've done earlier in this quarter. In the real world, it is very difficult to create an impulse response in a lab for testing a system. But the unit step is easy to produce. It's just turning a switch on and off with a given amplitude. It is not easy to measure h of t directly because the system cannot respond fast enough to the impulse. However, since we know that the impulse response is equal to the derivative of u of t, we know that because we saw earlier that the integral of delta of t gives you u of t. Then h of t, because this is a linear time invariant system, would be the first derivative of s of t. So if the step response of the system is measured to be s of t equal to k times 1 minus e to the negative t over tau u of t, we saw this in the prior activity, what is the impulse response? So we have here, so h of t is equal to the derivative with respect to time of k times 1 minus e to the negative t over tau u of t. We're going to use the chain rule to find the derivative. So we will have k over tau e to the negative t over tau u of t plus k times 1 minus e to the negative t over tau and remember the derivative of u of t is delta of t, so this is going to be times delta of t. Since this is the sifting property, this function is evaluated at t equals 0. So when I put t equals 0 into this function, 1 minus e to the negative t over tau, this whole term becomes 0. So h of t is equal to k over tau e to the negative t over tau u of t. And you should confirm that this is the same result that we got in in-class activity 1 
for this lecture. Okay, let's look at another example of finding the step response and the impulse response for the system with the following circuit. So we have a system here that is a first order differential equation. So as usual, the first thing we need to do is to find k and tau. k is equal to y of infinity over x of infinity. So k is equal to rb over ra plus rb. Tau is equal to r thevenin times c. So it's the parallel combination of the two resistors. So that's going to be RA, RB times C over RA plus RB. Since we already have the form for the step response for a first order differential equation, we know that the step response S of T is going to be equal to K times one minus E to the negative T over tau U of T and putting in the values we have for k and tau, s of t is equal to rb over ra plus rb times one minus e to the negative t times ra plus rb over ra rb times c u of t. Recall h of t is equal to the first derivative of the step response, s of t. So that is going to be k over tau e to the negative t over tau. k over tau is 1 over rac. times e to the negative t, ra plus rb over ra rb c u of t.